the burger ring door a hunt for the wilder people fan fiction written by the hitcher is my dad read aloud by sky asimaru if you enjoy this podfic you can check out the original story on archive of our own if you would like to hear more of my recordings or see some of my own work you can find me through the pen and screen name of Sky Asimaru. The Burger Ring Door Summary After serving 24 years in a small New Zealand community, the minister realizes something is missing. He goes to look for it. Chapter 1 The Legend of Psycho Sam Hohepa leaned on the bar, covering his eyes with his hand. <sighs> it's just, I'm not sure this is all there is, man. It fell out of his mouth like a rock, a huge admission plunking to the floor. He was half surprised the rest of the patrons in the place didn't turn around. What do you mean? Hunu asked. Hohepa sighed deeply trying to find the words to make his brother understand. <laughs> Dad was such a dick, I wanted to do the opposite of everything he said. And this? Hep grabbed his collar. Used to feel right. I used to feel the thing. Grace, whatever. But I'm getting old, mate. Things are making less sense to me now. Not more. Kids with their phones and talk ticks and fork games and flaming Cheetos and all the shit happening in the world with government bullshit. I'm just sick of all of it. He looked his brother in the eye, willing him to understand. <sighs> I don't know how to provide the answers people need anymore, who knew? I just want to get away from all of it. Go live in the bush with the stars or something. <laughs> you sound like Psycho Sam, who knew laughed. A fox that. You remember him, yeah? The nutty guy who lost it and yelled at us all that he was going to live in the bush alone, away from all the government bullshit and spying technology. He did that? Yeah, haven't seen him since. Heard of him, though. He's still out there, they say. Who says? Who knew shrugged? I don't know. People? Rangers? Hohepa considered this as he drank his beer. Running away from everything to go live in peace and quiet in the bush actually sounded pretty sane to him. Like a lifeline a burst of respect and not a little curiosity for the man his brother described, flared in Hohepa, pressed against the sticky bar in this dingy little pub. No fetters, no burdens, no doubts. Hohepa wasn't at all concerned with the government spying on him, but he was concerned with his rapidly evaporating grip on why he was doing what he did. He had been the minister here for 24 years. He'd graduated from the seminary in strong protest to both his parents' wishes, and not exactly turning his back on his Maori heritage, but decidedly not embracing it either. His mother had been sad about it, even though the Christianity came through her side of the family. He wasn't entirely sure what had sparked it. A midlife crisis, maybe. But Hohepa was beginning to see those young decisions for what they were. Frustration and rebellion. Denial had protected him for a long time, but it was beginning to wear thin. Lying in bed at night, he could see the cracks in his faith moving inexorably towards him. Hohepa had read a book once that someone had given him as a gift. He couldn't remember who now. He'd chucked it 
less than halfway through, but there was one bit that haunted him, that kept coming back to him over and over these days. The main character, a priest, claimed that there was only one degree of having faith and fifty degrees of losing it. He had said the unshakable certainty that guided grace and connection with God and Jesus was that one beautiful degree of faith that deserved the word, and that each degree under that was the slow dissolution of that faith. Hohepa now wondered if he'd ever had real faith. He had ministered this community for twenty-four years, yeah. But was it because of his dedication to faith? To Jesus, all tricky, standing behind a few doors? Or was he just a sheep in a maze designed by wolves? Hohepa didn't know any more. The tiny voice in his heart was pretty sure he was at least halfway down the rungs of the fifty degrees of losing faith, maybe further. The legend of Psycho Sam called to him like a siren. What's behind the other door? The voice whispered. As usual, Hunu was late. Hohepa had been meeting his brother at this pub every week for ten years, and he could count the times Hunu had been here before him on one hand. It didn't matter. He knew everyone here. It was a small town. He took a sip of his pint and asked the bartender, Gertrude, if she'd ever heard of Psycho Sam. Oh, yeah! Her whole face lit up. Like a legend, that guy. I used to come in here all the time ranting about conspiracy theories and saying how we weren't meant to live like this and, uh, we needed to get back in touch with nature, how the space between the earth and the sky is sacred and humans had done poorly to forget the privilege of living in it. But he also said the national rugby team was aliens and was convinced his dog was a walk-in, whatever that means. Good guy. He was great for a laugh. Hohepa didn't want to laugh. He wanted to know more. So what? He just fucked off into the bush one day? Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember that guy. He used to tell me pumpkins could receive radio signals from spice. Gary butted in. You talking about Psycho Sam? Makareta asked. He told me that too. He also said there's a special pond in the bush with an algae in it that prevents brain aging if you bathe in it. So that's deeply sacred, but no one seems to know about it or respect it for the gift it is. And just as well if he's been bathing in it. You should have heard him rant about forms, Siddy said. Couldn't get that guy to write nothing down. He wanted things like a phone in his mail, but wouldn't write nothing down. Was convinced forms were sentient evil, he called them. Hohepa just listened. One degree of having faith. Fifty degrees of losing it. Two doors. One hard to get through, one easy. Hohepa had been trying to get through the door with the other door behind it his whole life. But there was just another door behind that, and then another. It was doors all the way down. He felt ready to try the Dorito door, the Fanta door, the Burger Ring door. A rest, just a little vacation, was how Hohepa described it. He'd arranged a replacement to cover his absence at the church for a couple months. A couple months? Hunu cried. Hip, what you gonna do out there so long? Hohepa frowned. Yeah, I don't know, man. That's the point. It's something different. Just be. I need something else right now, mate. It's something... He wasn't sure how to describe what he needed. Something with both more and less substance. Something that felt more tangible, but brought him closer to divinity. 
this new ephemeral shape of something that had started to form in his mind, this conviction that something was missing. Oh, you really are like Psycho Sam. Hunu shook his head. Oh, shut up, man. Hohepa only wished he was like Sam. The tales people told about this man were fucking fascinating. Hohepa had asked everyone in town about him. The more he learned, the more he wanted to know. Hohepa told himself he was going on a spiritual pilgrimage into the bush. Reaffirm his faith. He vehemently denied, even in the depths of his heart, that he was going to look for Sam. Hohepa spent the first two weeks of his pilgrimage adjusting to his decision. He attempted to bask as much as he could in the gaping chasm of freedom he now had. It was, um, invigorating? He reminded himself this was a choice, that he could go back any time, and that he hadn't been all that happy back there. Hohepa walked and explored and finally got to apply theoretical knowledge he'd possessed for years. How to survive in the wild. All the books and shows he'd devoured in moments between scripture and sermons and counseling and ministering to his flock. He carefully rationed his precious confectionaries against his slowly building experience in hunting. He learned which herbs made fresh roasted meat taste delicious, and which made him immediately yak everything back up. He drew in his notebook, studying flowers and leaf patterns that he had never taken the time to even look at before. All this life dedicated to what he had considered God's creations, and he'd never even bothered to look at them. He became more attuned to the sounds around him, more able to navigate by his environment, and very, very sensitive to the sound of water. There was plenty of fresh water in the bush, but he'd run out a couple times on long treks across higher plateaus. He had learned the hard way that he could do without a lot, but water was to be cherished every single time he came across it. This was how he discovered the pond. Hohepa found a small stream fed by some invisible spring that seemed to originate beneath the clump of verdant bushes. As he strolled along it, the sun slanting down, beautiful and warm and nourishing, he heard a voice. A human voice. Hohepa hadn't heard a human voice in weeks. His heart rate instantly escalated. He approached carefully, trying to make as little noise as possible. He couldn't say why, but he wanted to see who was there well before they saw him. They were probably just hunters, but still... He crept forward and finally reached the pond. It was surrounded on all sides by leafy plants and trees and strewn about with boulders. The edges laced with bright green and the clear, shallow bottom lined with old leaves. Perched on a large rock in the middle was a man. A very naked man. A very naked man bathing himself. Hohepa's breath caught. This man had the sculpted limbs of Michelangelo's David, maybe even better. Sitting in the sunlight, the man was scrubbing his legs, and Hohepa was having what he might have called in any other situation a religious experience. Hohepa had never given much thought to the human form beyond the descriptions of creation. He'd never been overly affected by the sight of bodies. They were fine, whatever, 
but his calling had stipulated celibacy, and it had never been all that much of a hardship. He'd had one or two dalliances to see what all the fuss was, but nothing of consequence. This moment felt like facing a door. A door he hadn't even known existed. Maybe there were more than two. Hohepa stared at this man, bathed in light, sparkling in the sun, humming and chatting away to himself as he washed. His alabaster skin glowed against the deep green shadows of the forest, scattered about with dense constellations of freckles. It was the most beautiful sight Hohepa had ever seen. Hohepa leaned forward to see more closely <laughs> and snapped a dry twig underfoot. The bathing man looked up straight at Hohepa's face and shrieked. His scream was high-pitched and long, and it startled Hohepa so badly that he stumbled backwards. His foot struck something unyielding and the next thing he knew he had woomph down hard on his back. Wind knocked from his lungs, sharp pain bursting in his skull, staring into the dappled canopy of leaves above him. Oh, I... The naked dripping man was suddenly standing above him, his head ringed in sunlight. He was extremely bearded, his beard was longer and more unkempt than Hohepa's own, and it glistened with droplets. The man's wide-set eyes were concerned and kind, not a shade of anger or fear in them. Sorry about the yelling. I didn't expect to see you there. You all right? Hohepa fought to get his breath back. He managed to wheeze out. Uh, psycho Sam? The man beamed, sheer delight on the visible portion of his face, the bit not shrouded in beard and wild ginger hair. <laughs> You've heard of me? Yeah, Hohepa coughed through the black dots thronging his vision. Heard all about you. The dots congealed. Darkness overtook him. To be continued in Chapter 2 uh, uh, thank you for reading. Please drop by the archive and let the author know what you thought of their work.